Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, GR Mom, joined as always by Jared Ed. That's me. Hi. How's it going, Jared Ed? Fine. <laughs> Excellent. Let's get into it. Uh, oh, the, yeah. <laughs> the cocktail of the week this week. Uh, so, if I may begin with the digression, which is basically all this podcast is. Um, <laughs> as we have mentioned, we're doing over on Gen Runs with Dogs, Operation Pinto Bean. Which is a 12-week do-the-thing-that-you-haven't-been-doing challenge. Um, we're just at the beginning of week four of Operation Pinto Bean, so you are still welcome to join. But uh, someone had mentioned in the comments when I kind of check in with everybody on how their Operation Pinto Bean is going that she was using the Water Llama app, which was not an app that I knew and I downloaded it, and it's just a water tracking app, so you can set it to like remind you to drink your water, but you just kind of put in like how much of whatever you drank, and like if you drink, like I think it judges. <laughs> it it dear dad's upset because the app <laughs> it it kind of measures how hydrating your drinks are. So it, like if you drink water, that's like 100% water hydration. If you drink like diet coke it's i don't know like 80 percent of if you drank you know, if you drink eight ounces of diet coke it's 80 percent as hydrating as if you drink eight ounces of water and then you can put in alcoholic drinks and so the new, to digress on this digression the new york times did a reported on a study that someone did a number of years ago and this study said that drinking non-alcoholic beer after a marathon was a good way to hydrate because it's got some protein in it. Yeah, like recover. It's got a good some recovery carbs. drink. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And so, dear dad, now let me just repeat that. The study showed that drinking non-alcoholic beer after running a marathon was a good recovery drink. And so, dear dad went, drinking beer after exercise is a good recovery drink. Is even better. It is not, it turns out, because alcohol is dehydrating. And we have the... We have this back and forth pretty much every time Jared Dad works out in the evening because then he has a beer afterwards and he's like, the New York Times told me it's hydrating. <laughs> and, and I go, only if it's non-alcoholic. Which you do drink non-alcoholic beer. Yeah. That, that, but not, uh, yeah. You, don't, you don't actually note a difference in their hydration. And the app does. You get negative hydration if you, you drink do. alcoholic beer. If you drink drinks. a beer, you lose points. The you llama empties. got make up with some water. Yeah. Huh. I could... Yeah. That's why Jared Dad feels like it's judgy. I would turn into a skeleton if I drank only beer. I would die in two hours. You you would die eventually if you llama. just drank beer. No, it'd like shrivel up into a little tiny <laughs> skeletal <laughs> mummy llama. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, this app is great. Like it's got like a little llama and you like fill him up with water. The characters are super like but, adorable. But it also tracks like it's not just fills up it fills up with what you drank so yeah, mine so you get would like be like blue. I, and i don't actually do this in full disclosure oh. i'm just sniping <laughs> it's something i love at, <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know you loved it i, I stopped, love this app. i'll stop sniping at it then <laughs> but there's layers right it, it, you said it tracks like diet coke separately from water and if i drank beer it would drink it would like have a band for beer that's separate from water and diet coke yeah you get a different color for each kind of drink yeah 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 um, so anyway, I, and, and it does like a personalized calculation of how much you should be drinking every day, like based on the climate that you're in. Oh, so wow. like we need to drink more cause it's hot here and how active you are and your weight and your age and your gender. Um, so it's pretty good. I really like it. And so I've been using it for a few weeks and drinking way more water than I was. And I actually feel a ton better, which is stupid. It makes me angry. They're just like, you really need to hydrate. You should drink more water. And then I do, and then it works. It makes me angry. You look good. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so anyway, in this app, they have various challenges. And one of them is called Sober Bear, where you don't drink any alcohol for 10 days. And you get a little bear if you do it. And so I was like, I'm going to do that. So we're on, I guess, day three of sober bear uh so for the cocktail of the week i am messing around with non-alcoholic cocktails but i'm going to give you kind of an alcoholic and non-alcoholic version of the same thing so i have named this cocktail that i sort of made up but i'm sure somebody has many there are many variations of it out there i have called it the ciego de avila which is named after a part of cuba that grows pineapples because it's essentially a pineapple mojito so the non-alcoholic version is ginger syrup. I made it myself. 
ginger syrup is really easy to make. You just take a knob of ginger. You don't have to peel it or anything. Just put it in the food processor and get it into bits, sugar and water, and just simmer it for a while. I think it's funny it. that you say this is easy to make. Like that's already three more steps than I've ever done anything. Well, you don't make in the kitchen. Things, period. <laughs> <laughs> I would be like, I found a nub of ginger. I'm going to bite it. I have made homemade ginger ale before, which is basically ginger syrup, and then you just put carbonated water in it. Uh, that told you to peel the ginger, and peeling a ginger is a pain in the ass because it's all nubby and it's got like little crevices and stuff. It's a real pain. This you don't do any of that. You just you, you said something simmer. You said something about simmering. I'm like you've just. Whew. Just went right over my head. You know, this is great because it means I get to be the one who keeps cooking. Great for me. Great for me, too, because I don't have to have a dude who doesn't know how to simmer things making me dinner. Yeah, wouldn't that be embarrassing? Well, it would probably not be very tasty. You wouldn't get anything simmered. You'd get, like, boiled things. You make great eggs. (laughs) I could make you noodles. Eggs. I make eggs. Yeah. I could do an omelet. You don't like omelets, but I would freaking give you omelets all the time. (laughs) And be like, this is what I can do. Yeah. Yeah. I could probably make bread. I don't know. In thir- second or third try. Like a lo- b- bake a loaf of bread. Yeah. Second You've... or third try. Mm. First try, I'd be mm. like mixing up baking soda and baking powder. Mm, I'm not sure you understand what goes into bread. Science? Because neither baking soda nor baking powder go into it. There, This would be the first try. It would be, a, it would be really weird. Have you made anything with yeast in it before? Beer. Do you know how to knead? You don't knead beer. You mix it. <laughs> but if you're making this bread, you are going to have to Do I know knead. how to knead? No. I think I watched you make croissants once. Those don't have yeast in them. As kneading. It, it's well, not Folding. Exactly. Folding. It's yeah, folding. not the same thing. I, I've made cookies. You need, don't you need the dough in cookies? No. You mix it. You mix it. I've uh, made cookies, though. If you... Yeah, you do. The, here's the big difference. In cookies, you want to mix cookies for like the shortest amount of time yes. to get the flour mixed in. Because if you mix it for a long time, essentially what kneading is, you develop the gluten. That's why you knead oh, the bread. That could be bread. To get it gluteny so it all holds together. And you don't want that with cookies cause then, or cake because then it's tough. So it's sort of different. But Maybe you definitely I'm... could learn to make like a good serious biscuit. How about a sourdough? Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you could learn eventually, but you have like an awful lot of skills to develop. Oh, that was a really sad. Oh, no. <laughs> you oh, just no. jumped to like a quite difficult level of bread making, which is way it. more difficult than making cookies. Everyone's making sourdough in You don't know quarantine. how to simmer anything. You don't have to simmer for <laughs> sourdough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Why don't you make me some sourdough rolls? <gasps> Rolls are harder than a big freaking loaf. Make a sourdough loaf is fine. Yeah. How about tomorrow? Well, no. How Joe. about in three weeks? This, this is a difference. I don't. I'm not going to do it tomorrow. I, this is going to take three weeks. I got to get a starter. You got to get a starter. How, you, how am I going to do it tomorrow? I don't have any living sourdough starter floating around. Okay. What do I look like? Science crazy scientist. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, yeah. Anyway, ginger syrup. If you know how to simmer shit in the kitchen, it's quite easy to make. Snob. <laughs> uh, and uh, so, yeah. And if you make your own ginger syrup, like as opposed to using like ginger ale in this, because like, this is club soda and ginger syrup. So you could use ginger ale or ginger beer in place of those two things. But this is, it's got like a really nice zip when you make it yourself. I was it's surprised delicious. how much different your drink tastes than something made with ginger ginger ale or ginger beer. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a much um, much less extreme flavor. When you have ginger ale or ginger beer, it tends to dominate the drink. This one is is a much more subtle ginger. I think it's extremely ginger forward, but we have very different mm-hmm. ways of experiencing the world of taste. Yeah. Anyway, ginger syrup, mint, muddle it together, pineapple juice. And then club soda for non-alcoholic. If you wanted alcoholic, put in a shot of pineapple rum. It would be delish. It would be delish. Yeah, I'm not doing sober bear. Sober bear. I'm going to do rager bear. If I ever get on <laughs> the app, it'll be like, how much can I drink before the llama bursts in t- out in tears and the bear falls over? I found some apps. I've been looking at a whole bunch of different apps this week, and I found one 
Um, I was looking for an app to track my vegetable, fruit and vegetable intake. Mm. Um, and I, I mean, I've got, there's a variety of ones that'll do it, but I was looking for, you know, just what are the options out there? And one of them kind of will track all kinds of different stuff. And it has a alcohol intake thing mm. um, where you just kind of click, there's like a glass of beer and you can click that and it adds one to your list. And so I was like clicking through all of them to see what it does. And like, once you, it's like, oh, you've had like two drinks. And it's got a little smiley face and three drinks. It's like, you maybe want to slow down. And if you keep clicking it, it's like, please stop. Does it turn green and throw up? It, 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 it's like, you really, this is too much. Like you need to stop doing this. Well, that's going to have the opposite effect on most guys. No, just most guys who have problematic relationships with alcohol. And competitiveness and macho-ness. Most guys don't have problematic relationships with alcohol. They, they'd be okay. Most guys? Some you, many guys don't. I think this speaks more about the men in your life than men. Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> Anyway, this drink is also very beautiful, and I will post a picture of it uh, on the Instagram story. Mm -hmm. Good job, Jen. So, okay. That's that. Um, Can I digress quickly? Please. Because the drink has pineapple in it, doesn't it? It does. It would have been nice to have our own pineapple. That was on my list of things that you had said we should talk about on the podcast. Yeah. Should we talk about that? Go ahead, yeah. Uh, I'm going to derail your no, no, I gotta, carefully constructed Go lattice for it. work. Talk, of, talk about that pineapple. I put all that love into growing. I'm so sad. You uh, you have figured out that you can... I mean, you've, you've grown pineapples from seeds, too, from like microscopic seeds. It takes a very seeds. long time. It takes a long time, but you've also figured out that if you get a pineapple and eat the pineapple, you just lop off the leaves, and you can essentially just plant them. I you mean, just you, you, stick you, the whole top on the ground and it'll grow a new pineapple yeah, plant. Yeah, but it's already like way ahead of the seeds. Way ahead, <laughs> way yeah. Way ahead. Um, and we've done it in Maryland in, in vases. In, in those were the seeds. Oh, is that right? Those yeah. are from seeds? Mm-hmm. Oh, we got to bring those down here and free them. Free the but pineapple. we have since coming down here, I have bought pineapples at the store and then... Chopped the head off. Yeah, and then you soak it in water for a week and then it makes little roots and you plant it. And I did. And it produced a pineapple. It produced a surprisingly good size pineapple, like volleyball size. Not so football. a pineapple plant, for those of you who don't know, it looks like the top of a pineapple. It just gets bigger. Yeah. And then a stalk grows up out of the middle, and it has like a kind of purpley flower on it. And then that flower turns into a pineapple. So there's a pineapple sticking up three there's feet a above stalk, the ground. And the pineapple is on top of the stalk. It looks weird. Yeah, yeah. it does. And, uh, and you get one pineapple from your plant. Yeah, and so when, and they're supposed to take months to to finish those pineapples. Right? Yeah, this it's one not did. Like, not not like you know instantaneous or anything like that. Yeah. So I came back for Hurricane Elsa, and the pineapple had turned from brownish green to yellow, and yeah. I was like, oh, weird. And you were like, it's gonna if pick, it's, it, it's, pick it, pick it. It's ready. You did say pick it, pick it. And I said it's ready if it smells a lot like pineapple, and I kind of, you know. Bent down and sniffed, and it didn't smell like pineapple. I did to me. tell you to pick it like a dozen times, though. Yeah, and I yeah. didn't pick it. And then the, a week later, when we both came up, it was already mushy and mm. gross and sad, and it had overripened. Sad. I mean, the pineapple was probably happy because he, she, she thought she was going to be planted or going to make new pineapple plants, but um, for humans, it was overripe and mushy. Didn't even get to have a taste of that pineapple. Did not. Well, Grown? you didn't want it. It was gross and. I think it fermented. was fermented. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it was gr- there was a good reason. So it, that was sad, and that was just because I'm, you know, a dumbass. Um, <laughs> you were afraid. I was afraid, afraid of doing it, picking it early. Yeah, and like ruining it that way, that it wouldn't ripen, you know, in the kitchen or whatever. This is this Some is the kind don't. of thing where like sometimes you have to make a choice, and not making a choice is also making a choice. Like, I'm not going to pick where I'm going to go to college. Like, you can totally not pick, and eventually you have chosen to not go to college. You know? Yeah. Like, eventually not making a decision actually is making a decision. Yeah, you know. At least I didn't wreck it. Sure. Nature took Mm -hmm. its toll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so now we cut the head off that thing, and we're going to plant that. (laughs) So it wasn't a total loss. (laughs) Right now we have two other, well, three pineapple plants in production. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Oh, and how are we doing on mint for mojitos? Much mint. 
mint my mint experiment is doing well <laughs> are you saying this to make yourself feel better better about killing my beloved pineapple yes yeah okay good job the mint is great mint and basil we seem we to be able to grow mint and basil like nobody's business that's true okay moving on to dog updates yes great move on poor hops is having a bad week so she has a little like her elbow where she had the big problems in june um she has been limping more i think it's just the arthritis she has a little sore on there uh just like a little raw spot that it looks like i think because that's the side she sleeps on and she kind of pushes herself up on it and it just was really like normally that's where the elbow callus is and now it's all tender you know really like like she lost her elbow callus in the in the proceedings Yeah. yeah Um, but she also has had some gastrointestinal upset and, and now she has an ear infection today. So she's, dear dad took her up to the vet today and came home with canned food. Oh, Is yeah. there dry food? No, no. It's just multi-benefit canned food and the probiotics in the big giant Like five syringe. kinds of probiotics. Some you squirt in the mouth, some are in a capsule, some are a little powder in a package. No kidding. And a, and a tablet, I think. Oh, the tablet is... Um, the flagell. Flagell, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so she's getting taken care of. We got your well, stuff for her. Luckily, already. she loves the wet food. I mean, oh, she, a, she's like, this is the best, you guys. She's the best. Because she hadn't been eating much of her dry food, always looking at me for for cheese to put cheese in there which is you know (laughs) kind of a spoiled thing but apparently she really doesn't like that dry food compared to the wet food she was all into it It it's delish i guess Uh, everyone loves wet food yeah that's true all right so that's hops um vode is recovering so he's three weeks out from his surgery this was the this is sort of the completion of the first week where we could be doing physical therapy with him um he's still really sore like he's i've been trying but patient though he's fine he runs he he kind of moves quickly but doesn't use the surgery leg that's true he does kind of he, he's doing a three-legged run which yeah. is which is actually quite good and, and he's not doing it much and it's not really a run he he'll, does it for snacks yeah he'll kind of move quickly to the elevator but he's fine uh but he's He's still sort of sore, so I'm not. Try- I'm trying not to overdo it with his physical therapy. He gets bored is like the worst thing that's happening, where he's just like, I kind of want to play with Kowak. Could, he does. Can I bite someone? Is someone coming over here to bite? Because I'd like to bite. Overall, he has been an excellent patient. We still like the pinto bean. Yeah. I mean, it's a real challenge sometimes to keep the... I mean, almost always to keep the dogs calm, and he's a very calm dog. So he, the hardest part is taken care of for us. Yes. Remy and CB are doing a little bit better, I guess. I think so. I think things have gotten less emergency, like less frantic. There's still the sort of, there's still always the potential for inappropriate interaction by Remy. Yeah, especially when stuff gets exciting. Yeah. Uh, Today there was a thunderstorm that passed over and CB freaked the hell out, just lost his shit and, you know, climbing all over me, climbing and everything. Just, you know, you just have to wait for him to burn out the anxiety after about half an hour. He was just full on panicked and Remy just kept getting more and more excited because there was like stuff going on and then started humping things. Remy, what, like in general is calmer, you know, just having settled in a little bit, Mm -hmm. we tried taking down the trazodone that he's on which is like to help with anxiety and a sort of a sedative and that was not good he no, was barking he, more there and, was a noticeable difference for the worse so that went back on no. uh better living through chemistry good stuff <laughs> um but yeah i mean we keep them separated most of the time so we'll let remy out like now he's out with everybody else he's sleeping it's fine uh but he has to sleep someplace else and he spends a lot of his time in my office with me yeah, which he also, a lot he's of it is sleeping. It. And, yep. and he loves pets and he, he's turning, you know, he's more much more receptive to belly rubs and he chomps on a tennis ball sometimes. I mean, he's, he's, he's becoming more interesting. The main difficult development from the last week is that uh, the vet said until we get his glucose numbers regulated that he cannot get fixed. So he was supposed to go in to get fixed on Friday and she's like, 
We really, I mean, he's got a few things showing up weird on his blood work. And she's, and <laughs> so she called, she's like this and this and this. And I was like, all I want is to get this dog fixed. I'm like, I don't want to do anything that's going to put him in danger, but I have zero priorities beyond getting him fixed. Like, tell me what we have to do to make that safe. And that is absolutely the number one thing we have to do. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we have to get his blood glucose controlled. And then we've had him on some antibiotics for a UTI. In addition to the antibiotics that he's on for the Lyme disease, and then we have to do another blood glucose curve. And so maybe he'll get fixed in a couple of weeks, but it depends what the blood glucose curve looks like. I was weeping on the phone with the vet in frustration that we cannot get him fixed. Then we're taking him up next week to Miami to get his eyes looked at. When we did this with Manchego, they did kind of all the preliminary exams at once. So we would make one, you know, if he had been a candidate, we would have made one more trip up to get the surgery, you know, and then the aftercare. I called them and it sounds like they've just scheduled him for like his initial consult, but not necessarily like they have to do an eye ultrasound, like all this stuff that took several hours with Manchego. I don't, that's not really on the schedule. So they're going to, the kind of receptionist I talked to is like, well, you know, I'll make a note that we can maybe try to do that. But I'm like, it's six hours of driving <laughs> to bring him to you. Uh, like, can we just make this a thing? Yeah, if it's just 15 minutes to fill out forms, that is not a good use of your time. I mean, it wouldn't be 15 minutes to fill out forms. But it would be an hour to have an initial look at. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, he continues to be a project. And that's the dog updates. Yeah, my, uh, my theory is that CB's acting out more and more. I mean, he's, his anxiety seems to be not better than it was a year ago. No. It's worse. Jared, someday my butt won't hurt, but today is not that day. And so I would like to wrap up the podcast a little faster. Okay, okay, let's do it. Yeah, because I'm, I'm tired of standing here because I can't sit here. Understood. Here's German word of the week? Schranke. <laughs> what does that mean? Or Schlagbaum. What does that mean? Well, it's the, it's the, like, you know when you have a gate, like in the old Hollywood movies to get under the lot, there's that gate that you... That raises and lowers, like in a parking lot, parking mm -hmm. garage. Like a boom? Like a boom. It's called yeah. a Schranke in German. Oh. Or Schlagbaum. But Schlagbaum literally means smash tree. <laughs> like a tree that will smash down on you. I like that. That's good. Yeah, or or timber, like fallen falling tree. Yeah. Schlagbaum. That's good. So, they, so that's, it's typically, I mean, in my cultural memory, it's like a, borders right that's the thing that like you put down to close the oh, border and then interesting you open it to allow a cow a car to cross the border yeah yeah interesting schlockbaum how did that come up i don't know we were, an interesting i word. was just thinking about it yeah okay good one yeah it's been on the list for a while nothing nice. apropos uh our taste of the keys this week is that it is currently mini season and it hasn't been that bad no, it was surprisingly much worse last year with peep, kids in my backyard in the ocean. There was like one boat last night. At yeah. May, after, it, you know, it starts on Wednesday. We're recording on Wednesday. Mini season starts on Wednesday. That means midnight Wednesday morning. 12.01 on Wednesday, yeah. Yeah, so I think we saw one boat go by. That was it last night. It has been yeah. much calmer than it, it was last year. I, and I have no idea why there are fewer people behind our house. Because I drove up to the Middle Keys today to Marathon, and there are a ton of boats everywhere yeah. doing, obviously, lobster with, with diving flags out, doing the lobster fishing stuff. Yep. I could have caught, like, six lobsters in my short little swim today. They're just hanging out. They let me pet. Their, I pet their little antennas. I think until you're compliant with all the <laughs> regulations, you should you should wait. As they a vegetarian, a... I will not catch lobsters. Oh, that's fair. Because they deserve to live in their little cracks. Oh, they you wouldn't catch them to kill them. You'd catch them to pet them. That's the difference. I think you're allowed to pet regardless of the size. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's I th true. I think it's harvesting them, that's the if problem. If you keep them in the water, you can pet them all you want. Yeah. Well, I do. I yeah. just swim up and they stick their little antennas up and I pet their little antennas. And I think it's good that your swim friends and crowd, your supportive swim crowd is not being harvested. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I mean, we'll see though. Maybe they won't be there next week. Well, they could or move. Or tomorrow. They could move away. <laughs> to a farm upstate. Yes. <laughs> 
All right. Well, I know this is a slightly shorter podcast, but someday my butt won't hurt. But today is not that day. Poor butt. Uh, it really just hurts when I sit down, mostly. And which is a big activity. We're most... now podcasting standing up, which sucks. It makes it... Wait, for me, it makes it even harder to stay in proximity of the microphone. Yeah. Maybe next week. And I already have problems. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, until next week, get vaccinated and don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. Yes. Bye. Bye.